the pool. Let me tell you something about that pool. You see, the Easter Bunny thought that the pool would be a good idea since COVID-19 shut down all the swimming pools, the beaches, the water parks, basically everything the kids could do. And as much as I tried to convince the Easter Bunny not to bring a pool, the Easter Bunny brought it anyway. Because, see, Dad knew he was going to have to set it up. But that's fine. So today, I'm going to tell you the ins and the outs of what it took for me to set up the pool. Now don't worry, I'm not gonna spend the whole time venting about how badly I screwed this up. I'm also going to do a full in-depth review of the Intex 15-foot prism frame pool. If you wanna skip right to that review and pass by all my trials and tribulations, click to about this marker in the video, or, or I don't know where it's gonna be. It'll be on here somewhere. I said it before on my last video that I'm going to share with you all the successes and the failures of the little projects that I do on my channel. This one started off as a pretty epic failure but ended in a success. So stick around, stay tuned, and don't burn the house down. Or don't flood the house down. That doesn't work either. Whatever, just roll the stupid intro. When I started the project, I didn't think it was going to be difficult, so I didn't even think to make a YouTube video out of it. But once I got halfway through it and completely screwed the whole thing up, I realized, man, I should have been recording this all along. But fear not, I have a Ring video camera in my backyard, and unfortunately, it captured the whole thing. So I'm going to provide the dialogue so you can see all of the things uh, that went up and went down, as well as me kind of narrating through it. That's going to be the first part of the video. So I apologize for the kind of grainy film. It is a security camera. Uh, but after that, when I get to the review, I'll actually show you the pool. So here we go. Like every project that I do, this one started off with good intentions and some good measurements. We laid down the liner for the pool first, which was a 15 by 15 square, and then I marked the corners of it using orange landscaping paint. So that went as planned. Unfortunately, that was about it. From there, it was time to rent the sod cutter, which I proceeded to cut the sod with. Yeehaw. Back and forth, back and forth. Sorry about the video quality. I know this isn't very great. Once we got the sod cut, the whole family kind of jumped into the festivities here with the kids helping to roll it up, Becky helping to roll it up. Uh, that stuff is really super heavy. So brought in a hand truck, took several breaks throughout this little adventure. Dog even tried to help by digging up a little bit too. That was exciting. But uh, hey, there's Becky, there's Lily. And Lily, of course, being her little supervisor there in the shade. So lots of sod. Lots of sod to get that thing, uh, get it up and moving. So from there, uh, it was time to try to actually get the ground um, straight. So what I did is I took a, a two by four with a level on it and kind of drug that across the dirt uh, to do a preliminary leveling. Then what I did is I put down these landscaping timbers that you're looking at here. These were eight foot landscaping timbers uh, just around the perimeter. This was an afterthought. This was actually something Becky recommended um, afterwards, so we just put a nice border on it, which I did. That's where uh, one of the big mistakes came in. When I laid down those landscape timbers, I put them inside the 15 by 15 square, which we had measured out, <clears throat> completely forgetting the fact that we marked the square to be 15 by 15. So by putting down these landscape timbers, uh, I got them all nice and level. I was pretty happy about it. And then when I went to measure, I realized, oh man, my square is now much smaller than 15 by 15. It was closer to 14 by 14 because the landscape timbers, uh, they, they took up some extra room. So you can see the two by four in the middle there. That is what I was using to measure. And once I laid it down there, I thought, oh crap, I just realized that's not a big enough space now because the timbers were an afterthought. So here you see me digging up more space and bumping out the landscape timbers just a little bit further. I drove each of those into the ground using some uh, about eight inch um, rebar. So I put holes through each one of those timbers and then I smashed the rebar down into the soil to help kind of hold those into place. This is kind of where things went a little bit south again. So everything I saw online said to kind of use sand to help level out the, um, the the space that you're using. And so I did, I brought in some sand. I bought a bunch of sand, as you see, there's the truck with the trailer full of sand. 
Uh, and the the spot closest to the camera, which is also closest to the house, had probably a good six inch rise over the lower half, uh, which was away from the camera here. So as you saw me earlier with the shovel, I used that shovel to uh, kind of scrape the ground a little bit and to try to level it out. Uh, I got it as best as I thought I did. <clears throat> and then I started putting the sand down. What you're seeing here is I drove a stake into the middle uh, and then I attached that two by four with the level tape to it. And I just literally went around in a circle with that two by four until it was it was level. Um, the, the problem with this is, as you can tell from this shot right here, further away from the house, there was more sand than there was hard dirt. So right here, it was nice and level and I was pretty excited about it. We were ready to go, let's put the pool in. So I put down the liner and started setting up the pool. This is where I made the next mistake. As you can tell, when this pool starts to go up, I did not stretch the bottom of the pool out. Um, this, unfortunately, the directions suck when you're putting these things together. So I simply thought, well, hey, if I put the frame up where I want the frame to be, and if I put the feet up where I want the feet to be, the liner is just going to fall in place as it starts to fill up with water. That's a huge no-no. That's a huge mistake because the liner will fill up where the liner is sitting. So if you look closest to the camera right now, you can see some pretty big creases and bunches in the bottom of that liner. Uh, the water did not push that out. The water instead started pooling up away from it, which was on the far end of the pool. So the one tip I will give you is absolutely make sure that you stretch the bottom of that liner out 100%. Pull it out from every direction until the inside of the pool is perfectly flat on the bottom. That thing should be sitting almost exactly where you want it to sit. If you think that the water is going to just level everything out, you're absolutely wrong. You need to stretch the bottom of that liner out and have it sitting exactly where you want it to be with zero wrinkles and zero creases in the bottom of the pool. So here the time lapse is kind of showing, you know, more water going in it, more water going into it. <clears throat> and this is where I realized that there was, there was a pretty big problem happening. The top of the pool looks relatively level, but it is not. Uh, and so as more water went into it, more water into it, you can actually see the crease going from left to right. Oh, hey, look, there's a, there's the solar water heater. Wonder where, wonder where that came from. <laughs> you can go back and view the making of that. But anyways, as the water kept filling, I started to realize that this thing was starting to settle. Yep, there we go. What's happening? Why is this thing starting to sink? Well, the problem was I used too much sand in that far end of the pool to try to keep this thing level. And in the beginning, it was level. It was fine. But because the closest spot to the camera here had packed dirt and the farthest end had somewhat packed sand, it sank. And here you can see me starting to panic because the feet of this are starting to collapse. They're starting to sink down into the sand. And I'm going to pause right here and I'm going to show you something that, uh, that really got me a little bit scared. So take a look at this and let's point out all the things that I did horribly wrong. First and foremost, look at the bottom of the liner. The bottom of the liner, like I said, should be completely stretched out before you put any water into there. And if you look in the bottom of the pool, all of those creases and lines, those should have been stretched out so the bottom of the pool was perfectly flat. Look around the outer perimeter of the liner and you will see all the bunches, all the creases, that should also be perfectly flat. Now, take special notice of the feet of the poles and where they are resting. On the left side, there are two, maybe even three pieces of wood under each one of those. As you come to the center, there's one piece of wood. And as you go to the right, there's also two or three pieces of wood. I did this because I thought in my mind that if I kept the top of the pool frame level, the rest of it would be okay. And unfortunately, that was not the case. I had to stack four by fours, and two by fours underneath some of the legs in order to keep that top bar level. And that is what created this thing uh, to sink. It's what caused it to sink into the ground. Let me show you another picture of that here. This picture shows a little more in depth of what I was talking about. Those are all two by sixes underneath those feet in the front. And then on the very far right, that's actually a four by four. Also make note of that white strap that runs around the liner. Uh, that is supposed to be sitting flush and even against the the poles as well as the bladder itself. And it, you can tell here that it is very much bunched up towards the top. There's a lot of wrinkles in it. There's creases in it. And on that kind of right leg, it's actually folded over a little bit. This is the back end of the pool. 
Now that's actually a four by four on top of a two by six holding up that leg. This has also started to walk itself out uh, because of the fact that I didn't have the liner stretched out all the way in the beginning. The water, it wanted to flow downhill and it did. And so it went downhill, it compressed in the sand and it started to really put a lot of pressure on this leg right here. You can tell by the fact that going from top to bottom, that leg is leaning in towards the pool and to the right. It started to walk itself out as the pool filled up more, but unfortunately it got stuck on that landscape timber at the bottom and had nowhere else to go. If we would have jumped into the pool at this point, uh, the waves would have started crashing and started uh, thrashing around. This leg likely would have buckled under completely and we would have had a catastrophic failure of the pool. It would have completely collapsed. This is uh, where I realized, oh man, I've screwed this up and I need to fix it. So fix it is pretty much what we did. The more I looked at the pool, the more I realized that, yeah, this thing wasn't going to, it wasn't going to stay up and it wasn't going to be safe for the kids to swim in. Here I'm explaining to Becky, this is how badly I screwed up and where I failed. So if you look at the top part of the pool, you see something submerged in the water, a little black thing. That's actually a pump uh, that I'll put a link to in the description below. I hooked it up to four garden hoses. I strung it out into the driveway. And I let it run. I unfortunately didn't have anywhere that I wanted to put 4,400 gallons of water, so down into the street it went. I ran that thing day and night for about uh, a day and a half straight. Finally, it got to the point where the water was out. So then it was on to deconstructing the pool frame, uh, taking the liner down all the way. There was still a little bit of water left in there, so I had to kind of finagle that thing a little bit. Uh, you see me folding it up here kind of uh, rolling it up, creasing it, dumping out the rest of the water. There was still probably a good 100 gallons of water in there, but I got that out, and then it was on to doing the groundwork all over again. And what I did here is what I really should have done the first time. So I removed the landscape timber so I could re-level it, and then I started digging out the sand. I took as much of the sand out as I could so that I was down to the solid dirt, and then I brought in actual black dirt. My neighbor, who is a saint, uh, let me borrow his tractor. So we went down to the landfill where they always have free black dirt. He let me borrow his trailer. So we loaded up the trailer full of black dirt and we brought it in and shovel after shovel after shovel after painstaking shovel, several breaks in the in between, uh, we got the dirt out. I tried the best I could to spread it evenly while I was shoveling it off of the trailer, uh, uh, concentrating more on that farther end. You know, Becky got in on the action here as well, helping to get out the remainder of the dirt and help clean up the trailer while I was inside chilling out for a bit. And then I got the rototiller. This uh, helped break up some of the black dirt that I had gotten from the landfill. There was a lot of huge chunks in there and I didn't want to try to stamp that down at all. So I rented the rototiller, I tilled the ground so that it'd be nice and soft. Uh, and then I got out the big shovel uh, and I, I got the two by four with the level on top of it. I started leveling again. Once I got it to the point where I was pretty comfortable with how level it was, I rented a sod roller you see here. I filled it up with water. Uh, it got super heavy when you fill them up with water and then I rolled it back and forth across the dirt, uh, compacting it and leveling it. And then it was on to just literally dragging that two by four across it. And uh, if I had a spot that wasn't level, you grab the rake and you rake it out. You go from the high side to the low side and you, uh, smooth it out and then you roll it again and I did this process for several hours then once I was comfortable and confident that the black dirt was you know, as close as possible to being level I put the sand back down I took the, the roller I went back over top of it again uh, then I once I had it packed down I put a sprinkler on it I let it all get really nice and soaked here you can see that I found a high spot once again so I was raking that back out I was confident that that entire slab was within about an inch to an inch and a half in every spot. So I said, okay, we're going to put the pool back up now and we're going to do it the right way. I committed to myself that I was only going to do one piece of wood under each footing. And that was just so that it wouldn't sink into the ground as the water pressure um, started to build some weight on there. Now look at the bottom of that liner. Doesn't that look better? It's all stretched out. It's nice and uniform. I know where it's going to expand to uh, because it's already stretched out as far as it needs to be. Uh, so from then on, it was filling up water. And as the water filled up the pool, there were no surprises. Go figure. Uh, it, it obviously expands outwards, 
but it doesn't get crazy uh, in its expansion because you already have the liner stretched out. You know where it's going to expand to. Look at the white band going across the bottom as well. It's nice and uniform. It's nice and even. That is a safe pool. And I'm marveling at my accomplishment. Look at that level. It's so great. So after all that, there's two things you need to understand before you get an above ground pool. First and foremost, you're going to have to put work in to make sure your ground is level. And I mean really level. If you have to bring in dirt or remove dirt, get it done right the first time or you're gonna have to put the pool up and take it down and put it back up and take it back down and you're gonna waste a ton of time, a lot of heartache and a lot of water in the process. Level that ground out perfectly. The second thing, as you're about to see, if you want your pool to run as well as it should, you're gonna have to buy a lot of additional parts. So don't think that your investment stops when you just buy the pool and that's it. Before you get into something like this, price out the additional materials that you're going to need to actually get it up and running. It's gonna be a lot more than just the pool itself. So let me talk to you about those right now. Here is the final setup of the pool. After everything was set up and the ground is level as best we can, there's still about an inch and a half off level uh, within the pool itself from the left side being the low side to the right side being the high side. Try as I may and try as I might, I just couldn't get it to be perfect. The manual and everything you read about these pools says that they can be about two to two and a half inches off level comfortably before you start noticing any real problems and anything over three inches needs to be corrected or you may be looking at a structural collapse of the pool. And that's fine, inch and a half for me, aside from being a little bit cosmetic, is not uh, showing anything that's gonna have any sort of wear and tear problems on the pool. So that's the final setup. And now I'm going to actually give you my list of pros and cons for the pool and do a full in-depth review of the Intex 15 foot prism frame pool. The first pro I'm gonna list is the size. At 15 feet, this pool is perfect for us. We've had 11 people in here at one time, and obviously you're not gonna be swimming laps or, or deep diving for anything, but that's just perfect for us to be able to float around and just kind of have some fun in there. And it's just deep enough at 48 inches that my youngest five-year-old daughter can touch. Eventually, we might go a little bit wider and maybe deeper as the kids get older, but for right now, it's perfect for us. So 15 feet across seems like it's kind of the sweet spot. It's also around 4,400 gallons, so when I go to uh, fill it and drain it, it's not gonna completely break the bank on water, even though that's still a pretty significant amount. The second pro is the actual construction of the pool. It's really easy to take down and put up as these poles just simply slide into the coupling here. Uh, you go, the leg goes in, the sides go in, and then you pull the whole thing up. It's easy for one person to do. Uh, just make sure obviously you put the legs inside the bands like shown here, but I've done it myself twice now. Uh, it's very easy to set up. It's very easy to take down. Also, on some of the older models, I know that they actually had holes in these where you had to put, put screws in there to hold each one of these things in place. I'm not sure what they changed with the design, but this is extremely firm and it is not going anywhere. So very easy setup, very easy takedown. And surprisingly, it's incredibly sturdy. When the kids are in it and it's rocking, man, this whole thing will shake. The whole entire thing will kind of move and rock and sway. Uh, but that's what it's designed to do. It's designed to move as the water moves and uh, it's kind of unnerving at first but that's exactly how it's built so the the, the physics of how the pool works and how it kind of pushes out against the the poles and how this kind of belly band keeps everything in place it works really well and especially for the price point on these things uh, the design of the pool is definitely a, a positive the third pro I will list about the pool is the included accessories that come with it. Now this is also going to be one of my cons, but I do appreciate the fact that they include a uh, filter, a cartridge filter, uh, pool pump. They include this top cover. Now this is just a debris cover, it's not a solar cover, uh, but we put it on to keep the, the crud out of the pool every single night. It comes with the pool, it comes with the legs, it literally comes with everything you will need to get the pool set up and running with nothing else really additional that you need to buy unless you want to. I'm going to cover the things that I did buy additionally for the pool, but straight out of the box, you can set this thing up and be swimming tomorrow. It's a, it's a pretty good setup. Uh, the final big pro I have about this pool is the thickness and strength of the liner. 
you would think that you know, just a piece of, of fabric or whatever you want to call this wouldn't be able to be as strong as this is but man this is actually really really sturdy uh, when the kids are kicking off the walls of this you'll see their feet come pushing through the side and I suppose for holding 4,000 gallons of water you're gonna want this thing to be pretty thick and pretty sturdy but this liner feels like if you don't actually hit it with something sharp you're just not gonna break through it and and like I said that's that's probably supposed to be the whole point of having a bladder pool like this but I was really impressed with just the the durability of this and I, and I truly think it's going to hold up for several years worth of usage just so long as we take care of it. I just don't see anything going wrong with this liner. Overall, like I said, we are extremely happy with the pool and we're very, very happy that the Easter Bunny decided to bring it to our house as it has just been a terrific addition to our backyard. Especially, like I said, with everything being shut down, the kids are having a great time with it. The praises aside, there are definitely some cons that come with this pool and some additional parts that I think are necessary to purchase in order to get the maximum usage out of it. So I'm going to cover that now. The first and biggest con that I have is the filter. I know I said it's great that they include everything you need to put this thing up and get it running right away, which you do. You don't have to buy anything else. But this is the filter or the pump and filter unit that they give you. It's tiny compared to this giant pool. I'm just not convinced that that is supposed to be big enough to actually keep this thing clean. Uh, it's got a cartridge filter in there, so it's actually like a, an air filter. Uh, that the, the particles go through it, they filter out all the crap, and then you're supposed to be able to uh, keep your pool clean with that. I just don't buy it. Every forum that I saw online and every suggestion that I got was to not even install that and instead to install a sand filter, which is what we did. This is the Intex sand filter, and this thing has been working miracles for the pool. It has a very high rate of flow, and because it uh, has the sand in it, you don't have to worry about uh, changing out filters and changing out all that crap. You put in one big bag of sand, and as long as you backwash it and clean it kind of regularly, you don't have to change the sand for years to come. It's quiet. It only uses uh, about, as, I think, about 150 watts to run. Uh, maybe it's closer to 200 watts, but we leave this thing running for 12 hours a day was split up between six hour or uh, six hours and six hour increments and it does a terrific job of cleaning out the pool so um, uh, con number one don't use the little pump that comes with it if you can help it upgrade yourself to a sand pump and unfortunately this is where the cost starts to add up because if you truly want this pool to operate at its maximum potential you do need to get a couple of different things so step number one is the sand pump If you're going to get the sand pump, you definitely need to upgrade your uh, cleaning ability within the pool as well. Uh, just letting the pump pull in through these outlets and filter and then spit it back out over there for us didn't do the it didn't do the job it didn't do the trick so i added a hayward skimmer uh, and you can see these online pretty much everywhere uh, the skimmer you do have to cut a hole in the side of the pool which can be very unnerving uh, putting a hole through this nice beautiful liner that i talked about but it does an amazing job of pulling things in off the top of the water filters out the big media through the basket right here so any leaves or big bugs they get caught in the basket it then runs down through the piping the tubing and goes into your sand filter this does require that you cut a hole in the side of your liner there are several instructional videos on how to do this it's actually very very simple uh, so google that if you're curious in in the, the hayward skimmer i did prop it up with a two by four and my reason for that is and this is another con being a liner that this is you don't want to hang anything off of anything of weight i, I just have a hard time believing that that's going to be good for this to have the weight of this guy just hanging off the liner so I just propped up a two by four underneath it. Uh, and that keeps the, the skimmer level, uh, so it's not tilted back, and it, and it keeps it doing its job. And I also believe that that's probably gonna help increase the longevity of that liner. So it may not be the most cosmetic thing on the planet, but it absolutely works. 
Now on that same vein, the way the sand filter set up, I also put a board down here just to keep the, fil the sand filter kind of upright. It, it, I don't know why they would design it with this big part hanging off. It, it starts to kind of pull down a little bit, but uh, I just put a board down there to help prop that up and uh, it kind of fixed that problem. Since you've already cut one hole in the wall with the skimmer, you also need to expand the hole where the water return comes in if you do happen to go with that sand filter. The tubing, I don't know what the exact dimensions are, but the tubing for the original uh, skimmer and the original pump, it's a lot smaller than this tubing, so you do have to expand this hole as well if you choose to um, add the sand pump. I kind of rigged up a little string here just to keep the weight off of this, similar to what I did over there with the two x four. When this doesn't have the string, it just tends to kind of pull down a little bit. And it doesn't seem like it hurts the liner, but I just can't think that that's gonna be good for it in the long run. So anything, uh, anything you can do to kind of keep the weight off of that liner, I think is probably a good addition to the pool. One other really nice feature about the skimmer is that it comes with this attachment for a uh, pool vacuum. And what you do is you just take the lid off the skimmer here, take out the basket, and then you drop this down into there. That allows you to hook up the hose for your pool vacuum, which I've got over here, just your basic pool vacuum with about 20 feet of hose. And that allows you to scrub the walls of the pool and then to uh, suck up all the debris that falls to the bottom of the pool that maybe the skimmer didn't quite catch. So that's something I do every couple of days or depending upon how dirty the pool gets, maybe a little sooner than that. But uh, that's another really nice feature of that skimmer and that pump uh, combination. The last con I have about this pool is the ladder that comes with it. And man, this thing does not feel sturdy for me. The instructions say it will accommodate up to a 300 pound person. I'm not 300 pounds, but I am a bigger guy. And whenever I use this to climb over the wall of the pool, it just feels like it's gonna collapse underneath me at any time. The kids don't have any problem, obviously they're small, but this thing does not feel like it would accommodate a 300 pound person. And I'm, I actually think it's actually bent a little bit since we've been using it because you can see it's got a pretty good wobble to it and uh, it's it's assembled fully it's it's how it's supposed to be so it's just not a very sturdy ladder and unfortunately I have not been able to find a good replacement ladder online uh, anywhere so if anybody has a good suggestion for a ladder that they use instead of the Intex one out of the box please feel free to drop that in the comments below I'd be very interested in that one little thing I'd like to show you about my setup, and obviously this isn't a pro or a con about the pool, but I have uh, two things that need powered over there. I've got the sand pump and then I've got the solar heater kind of in the background there. And I didn't want to just have unguarded draped extension cords plugged in 24 seven. So I do have obviously the cords running through the yard there. But what I did is I ran one extension cord from the house and then I bought a Rubbermaid deck box this is where I store all the chemicals, all the pool supplies, et cetera, et cetera. But I cut a little notch in each corner of the deck box or each side to run the wires in. And then a little notch over here to run the wires out. It's a little bit messy in here, so don't judge me. But down there in the bottom, I have two TP-Link switches. And I've shown these in my videos before. One for the sand filter and one for the uh, solar heater pump. This gives me the ability to set programmable uh, routines. So every day I have the solar pump turn on about 9 a.m. That's when the sun is coming up in the sky. And then I have it shut off about six o'clock because that's when the sun kind of goes away. I also have the sand pump set up on a timer that way so that I can turn it on for six hours in the morning, six hours in the evening. They turn on, they turn off, I don't have to worry about it. They're app controlled, so if it's a super sunny day, I can just shut the solar heater off entirely. Or if we are using the pool a lot and it happens to get really dirty, I can just hit the button and let the pump run for a while. It also lets me monitor the electricity usage on both of those devices, which as if you've watched any of my videos, you know that's very important to me, so I can track them in both the sensor app as well as my overall daily usage uh, with my solar panels so that's kind of a nice addition just something that I ran with the setup 
So that is it. The main question of, uh, you know, if the Easter Bunny didn't bring this, would we have purchased it? And the answer is absolutely yes. We are in love with the pool. The girls swim in it almost every day, except for today and yesterday when it's in the 60s here in Minnesota. Gotta love the weather. But it's been an absolutely terrific addition to the backyard. And uh, the girls are absolutely loving it. The family has enjoyed it. And we are looking forward to many, many swims to come. So thank you very much for watching. If you're interested in any of the products that I talked about or the additions to this pool, I will link them in the comments below or in the uh, description below using my Amazon affiliate links. So feel free, if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. But thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.